Hey guys, I'm Andre, a certified translator and a real estate concierge. Over the last two years, I have been relocating people to live down here in Belarus. Perhaps an odd choice of a destination, but since you're watching this channel, it's probably not what you think. And this is the traditional, although not weekly, digest of the local headlines. It's not really a media release or anything, it's just my biased vision of what's happening in the world and specifically in its most central and vital part called Belarus. Thank you for staying with the channel, thank you for watching, pressing likes and helping the channel. There's some 11 patrons on Patreon, the link is down below. Nobody donates on donation alerts unfortunately and there are a few YouTube members uh, that have monthly subscription fee and unfortunately I can't have that money for now, but maybe someday I'll have that money. So thank you for supporting, your money is helping to create some new content. August is a holiday month everywhere. In late August, I'll be going away for a couple of weeks to some sunny place as well. But so suddenly there is just um, a bunch of things to do. We're selling a one room flat for my American guy. As you know, we don't have bedroom system here. We have a one room, two room flat, and one of them or two or both may be bedrooms. So I'm selling, helping to sell a one room flat to my American who's got a family and children. He wants to expand into a three room place. And uh, a standard, nice, uh, renovated one-room flat in Minsk can start around 50-55,000 US dollars. It depends on the moment, it depends on the context. So you have to screen all the offers as usual and make your offers to the sellers as you're looking for a deal. There is a prenuptial agreement for a client who wishes to pass his property to his wife. We just did that for the wife and husband, so properties went to husband. He is keeping the residency in Belarus and she is away in a different EU country where she wants to keep a low tax profile, which is also an admirable and wise thing to do. There is also a three-room flat that we're looking to buy. There is a three-room flat we're looking to rent for an Indian family that just got the residency in here for one year. And there is a bunch of other things to do. I just don't remember everything. So things are fairly, things are fairly busy, work is coming and people are relocating. As media is spreading all the rumors about Polish reinforcing their border and the military group uh, muscling up here in Belarus to cause all sorts of trouble to them across the border, people are still relocating. Mostly, interestingly enough, it's uh, folks from America coming here. I know there are many crazy folks in America, but they're most welcome to relocate and I'm officially assisting in this process. And uh, the, uh, I would say that the worries of potential tourists are rather ungrounded for now because the place is safe and sound, there's no war, any indications of any war coming. And all the tensions are mostly building up in the media. That's my uh, vision as a local, not as a guy looking to relocate you or sell you a flat or something. I don't sell flats, I sell solutions. So I would say everything is quite safe and sound and you shouldn't believe the media releases about how bad it is to travel here and how dangerous it is. By the way, the most preferred method for relocation is a countryside property around $10,000, a solid home that is still holding in one piece pretty much and that can be converted into something more livable like a summer house. One out of 10 people is buying an apartment and crypto is helping that very much. As you know, bank transfers are a little bit complicated, so it's not a problem. And one out of ten people is still opening a company and it's still a pretty uh, torturous way to go, but some people choose that. Some people choose education, but that's like one in twenty for several reasons. As always, everything starts with travel and tourism, and if you wish to savor and test drive our destination first, you have to come over here, mostly on a visa. Flights with Visa Free Mode still work. You have to watch my tips and tricks video for 2023. I will leave a link below. Otherwise, get a visa, maybe apply in Vilnius uh, for an express visa, take a bus, and that bus from Lithuania seems to be the only feasible and comfortable way to get over here, uh, compared to a bus in Poland, which has its own wrinkles, and waiting times at the border are pretty bad. So I recommend Lithuanian end. Uh, the visa can be 30 to 90 days. I can definitely provide visa support for any potential clients of mine, be that tourism or business, specifically relocation, it's not a problem. It's just about your wish to have a trip here and your, your having a valid passport to apply for a visa, that's it. And of course cash. 
a few other bits of news. The Lithuanians are screaming about sh shutting down two checkpoints at the border. Uh, again, a local view of that. It's just non-essential border control points, which are not the ones chosen by the bus traveling between Minsk and Vilnius, used by the bus. And the uh, there are no trains since pandemic. So buses and minibuses, the shuttle buses, and you'll find some four or five providers uh, are operating without too much trouble five to seven hours, uh, including a couple of hours at the border, and you're getting there. As the tensions are, what I would say, artificially created at the border with Poland, but probably from both sides, I would say that the request of Poland to get some metal from America down here, helicopters, tanks and everything, rearm there, uh, special forces divisions for any potential aggression from the side of Belarus, that's just about Poles getting cash, and they're very pragmatic fellas. Uh, from the uh, good Americans and to reinforce their army and whatever gear is quite outdated there, you know, for any potential war from anybody, from any direction. So I would say it's a very pragmatic approach, except the media noise about all this aggression and me the weapons mounting up is not helping tourism and travel, which has been quite dead since 2021. We should agree on that. At the same time, it's quite sweet that an American guy is coming here in a month. It seems like one of those uh, old-fashioned holidays. The thing is planned half a year ahead with all the exactness and documents prepared and double-checked and some three visa agencies involved to get the bloody visa. As I always say and will say, visa agency, you know, which is not dealing with Belarusian visas any frequently, is a waste of your money. That's just the best way to put it. If you're capable of putting a postcard in the envelope, and, you know, writing down the address of the consulate, that's all you need to apply for a visa, be that consulate in Washington or show up in the consulate in Vilnius yourself. No advance booking is required for that. If you're coming in here for a quick trip, short trip, like a week plus, and the shortest of shortest could be up to a month, uh, take care of the cash. You have to ca carry some in the pocket because your card may fail at the most inconvenient moment. And then you'll be looking like some guy without money, basically. And the, this, uh, this is not the most comfortable disposition, dispositions of all. The uh, uh, cash uh, of several hundred dollars for the whole stay, like a uh, thousand for a week, including the uh, apartment, of course is something what I would recommend on top of having a couple of cards in case one gets blocked by your home bank and one fails here for some reason so you could have a replacement plastic card to use. And again, 70% of the cards of the folks coming here, mostly Americans, uh, although let's say half of you have Americans, they are working. There's just three local banks whose uh, payment, uh, payment spots cannot process the payments because of the sanctions, otherwise everything works like that. But cash definitely rocks. I will put down a couple of banks whose ATMs give commission-free 500 rubles of cash per week. That's a limit set for the foreign cards since the beginning of the year. Unfortunately, it's still, still holding, it's still there. And if you're running out of cash here, you will have to do some ATM ventures to get some cash. Again, it's very helpful to have some. I will be releasing some July statistics for real estate a few days later, maybe by the end of the week, after we digest all the problems in hand. And the uh, point is that August is a bit of a dead, dead season. People are on holidays, improving their sunburn and taking care of their harvest in the dacha in the countryside houses. So that's... Uh, the season is a bit slow, so there's not many, there aren't many figures to, to share. By September it's going to be changing again. So let's talk about some social news, social events, which will throw some light on, on basically our lifestyle and how we're living here. There are some indicators that the war is going to conclude within a couple of months, although it's a very stretched and very philosophical way to put it, because I obviously have no insights in there. We can just observe the show from the side and see what can be, what, what can be done about, the, about dealing with the aftermath. That's, that's what we can do at our level, I guess. So the most important bit about life here is that countryside is rocking. The next week is going to be plus 30 centigrade. It's going to be pretty, pretty hot. So people will be going to the rivers and lakes, which are pretty dirty by now. So bathing in there is not really a good sanitary habit. But people will be relaxing before the new schooling year starts. And the beginning of the new schooling year gets all this preparation process with pencils and uh, uniforms for the children to go to school. Some bureaucrat recently voiced a figure. Uh, the budget frame to prep a, a kid for a school season is between 100 and 1100 rubles. So that's roughly up to 300 bucks plus, depending on which grade of school that's going to be for all the 
uh, things for, for the arts, for the, the fitness classes and for, for all the crap. There's no mandatory uniform of a single standard in Belarus. People just, kids just have to dress up business-like, office-like. Uh, in my childhood, uh, in the fifth or sixth grade, they introduced this thing and uh, there are split opinions on that, like children should be free, enjoying their stuff, or the children must dress like humans, behave, blah, 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 and then the system will slowly digest them and make them, turn them into citizens, I guess. So, what's your vision on school uniforms, guys? And tell me if that improves a person to become a real decent human being. That's gonna be a nice, interesting feedback from you down below in the comments. As the weather is heating up, mushroom and berry picking will be a bit challenging because they will close down forests for fire alerts. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, that's not conducive to good harvest of either berries or mushrooms. But people are doing that large scale. Except in the south now, it's a bit of a problem because Ukrainians who made uh, uh, pretty frequent uh, cranberry pickers in the swamps of the south will not be coming anymore because there's a load of landmines splitting us. And uh, it's going to be a big thing about who's going to pick it because in the villages in the south, life uh, level of living is pretty miserable and people use this side ho uh, hobby, let's say, for earning sometimes uh, with pre pretty decent income. Except now our frozen berries like blueberry, cranberry cannot go to the west anymore to make this nicely packed Scandinavian frozen blueberry or something. I'm not sure if they write like originating from Belarus or something on those packs, but they would cost three euro per little pack while well, they pay here three euro in the best season for a kilogram of harvested blueberry. And a single person, a natural, normal human being can harvest some 10 to 15 kilograms of blueberry a day, by the way. So let's see how that part of the picking season is gonna, is gonna happen. The government is struggling to find a replacement to imports that have been sanctioned, some import items, imported items like Samsung phones or some other, let's say, brand things, the brands who stepped out of this region because of the war including IKEA, except in the previous release of a uh, news digest. I actually showed you a couple of uh, price tags with IKEA items freely selling here in the shop in the city center. And we might say that the sanctioned things are just finding their way down here pretty, uh, pretty freely. There's no problem about that, including Pringles crisps and some other crap that some people very much can't imagine their life without. Last but not least, there has been a pretty curious case of a Limony. A mother in Vitebsk sued her son for not taking care of her, which is a must by law. There is a special precondition if the parent uh, or a parent were taking care of a son or daughter, then it must be the opposite uh, back when they get old. So apparently the son was not really taking care of her and we don't really know the background because nobody showed up at court and the court or took a verdict according to which the son must wire his mom three base units to support her living. Uh, I'm not sure how much of damage it makes to his salary and I'm not sure if he's going to appeal the verdict but that's how things work out here in Belarus. You must take care of your next of kin. Again, guys, thank you very much for watching the video. Any comments and feedback about the issues covered, about something I forgot to cover, will be most welcome down below. Uh, thank you, anybody, for donations, donation alerts, Patreon, or, well, basically, there are no other ways to, to do that, so that money could reach me in spite of the sanctions. Thank you very much for watching the videos, and maybe we'll see each other live somewhere in the city center of Minsk for a casual coffee stop, or maybe at one of the expat meetings. I will announce the next expat meeting down below. It's a nice bar in the city center, so people are talking, sitting down and discussing all the things without any uh, media prism distorting the vision of things. Thank you for watching and see you later. Cheers!